Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss a very important concept, very important topic within digital systems, which is combinational circuits, and we are going to specifically look at decoders. Now, digital systems is a very important section within the exam because it qualifies as what I call one of the big fives. So we have mathematics, circuits, electronics, power systems, and digital systems. These big five topics account for roughly 50% of the exam weightage. Now there are only five out of 17 sections, but because of the weightage and the number of questions you can potentially see on the exam, it is very important to understand these concepts thoroughly and completely slow down when you hit these sections and spend the extra time and effort because it is going to pay dividend on the exam. So let's get started with decoders. Hello and welcome to part one of this multi-part lecture series on the topic of combinational circuits, which is a subsection of digital systems. We will start this lecture with an introduction to combinational circuits, then we will introduce decoders and discuss two to four decoder and three to eight decoder in detail. Combinational circuits, unlike the sequential circuits, are time independent logical circuits. The output of combinational circuit does not depend upon previous inputs as was the case with sequential circuits that we've reviewed in the form of counters, combinations of flip-flops and so on. Examples of combinational circuits include decoders, encoders, multiplexers and demultiplexers. So combinational circuits have set number of inputs and set number of outputs and depending on the combinational circuit that you are Looking at whether it's a decoder, a multiplexer, a demultiplexer, encoder, and so on, the number of inputs and number of outputs can vary. Combinational circuits have several advantages. They are very speedy. They are easy to design. They are time independent, as I mentioned over here. So the output does not depend on the previous inputs, uh, which is a useful feature for different applications, and they don't require an external clock. However, one of the major drawbacks is that they don't have memory elements. Depending on the application, if you do want to store states, you won't be able to do it directly with the combinational circuits. You will have to use um, flip-flops and other devices for that. So the first combinational circuit that we are going to review is decoder. Decoder is a combinational circuit with N input lines plus enable. So enable will basically turn on or off the decoder and the decoder with N inputs will have two raised to power N output lines. It is a multi-input and multi-output logic circuit. In this lecture, we are going to discuss two to four decoder and three to eight decoder. So a two to four decoder would basically mean that you would have two inputs and four outputs, and a three to eight decoder will mean that you will have three inputs and eight outputs. Two to four decoder. So as I just mentioned, a 2 to 4 decoder will have two inputs and two raised to power n, which is equal to two raised to power two in this case, which is equal to four outputs plus the enable. The enable will basically decide whether the decoder is on or off. Depending on these inputs, we can select any of these outputs. So this is typically how the decoders functionality and input output relationship is expressed in the form of a truth table. You have the enable line, you have the two input lines, and then you have the four output lines. When the enable is equal to zero, irrespective of the values of inputs, inputs A and B can be one or zero, the output will always be equal to zero because the decoder is off and enable is zero. With inputs A and B, we can have a total combination of four different types of uh, inputs, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And for all of these scenarios, we will assume that enable is equal to 1. It is high so that the decoder is functional. So let's take a look at input 0, 0. When input 0, 0 is uh, provided uh, to A and B, this basically responds to 0 in decimal. And that basically means that y subscript 0 will be enabled or will be turned on or will be active or will be high 
Okay, so zero, zero for the input response uh, to y zero output zero. So this decimal actually corresponds to the subscript value of y. Then we have zero one. So zero one in binary is equal to one in decimal and this will correspond to y1 okay so one over here and y1 will be turned on and then we have one zero which corresponds to two in decimal so this will activate y2 and finally we have one one which corresponds to uh, three and this will enable y3 so you can see that by using different combinations of inputs we are able to enable any of these output values so this is how a decoder works fundamentally and it allows us to manipulate or select output values depending on different input values let us now take a look at a practice problem we are being asked to express the two to four decoder outputs y0, y1, y2, y3 as functions of the inputs a and b using the truth table that is given to us. So we want to come up with a relationship with an expression, a logical function that would relate these output values back to the input values. So let's start with y0. You can see that the value of y0 is equal to 1 when enable is equal to 1. So we will include this e over here and a and b are both zero so because a and b are zero we will put a naught and b naught over here so y naught can be expressed as e times a naught and b naught so whenever you have a value of one you can use that um, uh, input as is and whenever the value is of the input is zero you will have to use a naught or a hat or b naught or b hat. Similarly, we can go about expressing y1, y2, y3 in the form of e, a, and b. So y1 is equal to 1 when enable is 1. So you have e appearing over here. When a is equal to 0, so we will use a hat or a naught or a bar. And b is equal to 1, so we can use b as is. And similarly, you can take a look at y2 and y3. So what we've done in this case is we basically expressed all, all of these output values as functions of enable and the input values a and b. Let us now take a look at a 3 to 8 decoder. A 3 to 8 decoder, as the name suggests, has three inputs. So we will call them a, b, and c, and it has eight outputs. We are going to call them y0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So three inputs and eight outputs because two raised to power three is equal to eight. Let us look at three to eight decoders functionality in terms of the truth table. So the first thing is that if you have enable equal to zero, the decoder will be off. So regardless of the inputs A, B and C, your output values are always going to be zero. Now let's start with input values of zero, zero, zero and assume that enable will be equal to one, the decoder will be turned on for the remaining combination. So a total of eight combinations can be um, inputted on the input side because we have three values, three inputs. So two raised to power three is equal to eight. So we can have a total of eight combinations. So when we input zero, 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 that responds to zero in decimal, and that will basically activate y zero. When we select 0, 0, 001, that is equal to 1, so that will activate y1. And similarly, 0, 010 0 responds to a 2, that will activate y2, and so on and so forth. So you can go through all of these combinations, and you can see that by selecting different values on the input, it will respond to different values on the output. So the basic function is still the same, whether you're looking at a 2 to 4 decoder, a 3 to 8 decoder, or a 4 to 16 decoder and so on. By selecting unique values on the input, you're able to get unique values on the output. 
Let us now do a practice problem with the 3 to 8 decoder. We are being asked to express the outputs by 4, 5, 6 and 7 as functions of A and B using the truth table which is given below. So this is the truth table and I have just included Y4, Y5, Y6 and Y7 because that's what the question is asking. So let's start with Y4. So you can see Y4 will basically respond to this entry, this combination. When the enable is 1, so we can use E as is. Input A is 1, so we can use A as is. And B and C are 0, so we have to use B bar and C bar. And you can go through the same exercise for the remaining 5. Uh, for Y5, we have E times A times B bar times C. Okay. And for Y6, we have E times A times B times C bar. And for Y7, we have E, A, B and C. So we've expressed these output values as functions of enable, input A, input B and input C. Now, in some cases, you can probably assume, right, over here, the question didn't ask you to express it as a function of E as well, but you can see that when enable is equal to zero, then this output value will be equal to zero. So we are interested when output value is equal to one, when it is high. So for that, we have to account for enable equal to uh, one. Otherwise, you can assume that um, um, the decoder is on, and that's when you can basically drop E. But, um, it doesn't harm to include E just to make sure that uh, you enforce the condition that the decoder is on. So in this lecture, we introduced combinational circuits and decoders, and we took a detailed look into two to four decoder and a three to eight decoder. For further practice, I would recommend you to check out the quiz at the end of the lecture and also consider the problem sets in the study guide and practice exams. Thank you. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES F Electrical and Computer Exam specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 